Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover setting up a MIDI control surface in Cubase 12. This will allow us to use buttons and controls on the MIDI controller to control functions in our projects such as transport tools, track volume, and panning. I'll be doing all this with the Akai MPK249 and I've set up the control to just send normal MIDI CC controls for all the buttons to a generic preset that I'm using. I haven't been able to use the Cubase preset properly with Cubase 12 from this MIDI controller. To get started, we'll be setting this up as what's called a MIDI remote in Cubase 12. To access this panel, open the bottom zone with the button in the top right. Switch the panel to MIDI remote on the right side. Use the top left button to open MIDI remote manager. You can also press the plus in the center of the screen. At the top of the window, press the button that says Add Surface. Select Akai as the vendor, add model, and manually type in MPK249. This will obviously differ if you have a different brand or model of MIDI controller. Below that, we select the input port dropdown and set it to MPK249. This is just a list of MIDI devices that are connected to our software. Create the MIDI control surface. Now we get a window that's a large blank grid where we can add various controllers. The first step to this process is telling Cubase 12 what signals it expects to receive from the MIDI controller. In this case, the MPK249 has three banks of eight controllers. There's a knob, fader, and button at the bottom. We also have buttons for the transport in the middle. To add controls, we click starting in the top left of the grid. I'll use the options on the left to add a knob. We can select the knob, fader, button, or trigger pad. I'll start by adding a row of eight knobs. With the right spot on the grid selected, just move the knob on the keyboard to add it. It will jump to the next spot right after that, and we can keep moving all the controls on the MIDI keyboard to add all them in. Since there's three banks, I'll move over a few spaces to the right to give me some separation, then switch the bank with the selector on the MIDI controller and keep going. When we're done, we should have a row of three sets of eight knobs. If you're running out of space, you can click and drag the right side of the grid to expand it and zoom out, that way you can add more controls. If we click the bottom of the next row and set the control bank on the MIDI controller back to the first bank, we can switch the control type on the left side to a fader and move all of these to start adding them. I'll add them all below their corresponding knobs. After I've added them, I'll click and drag the bottom of each of them to stretch them down two squares. That way they look a little bit more like they do on my MIDI controller. Once the faders are done, I repeat the process once more with the buttons. The last controls to add are the transport buttons. With these, I set them up as MIDI CC buttons within the MPK249 settings on the keyboard itself. That way Cubase 12 will recognize these signals. I'll put these below in the middle of the grid and make sure the five buttons are centered so it looks nice. The one thing we need to change on these is they need the value mode set to relative binary offset. I found this setting works best for the transport controls with my setup. Now let's open the Mapping Assistant. The Mapping Assistant takes what we created in this grid and allows us to pair it with a control in Cubase 12. To open it, press the keyboard button or this button in the bottom to get this window. 
With the Mapping Assistant, we can use the MIDI controller to move a control, and that selects the active input. Then we use the menu on the right side to select what we want to pair it with. I'll start with the Transport tools. I'm pairing the Forward and Rewind buttons with the Forward and Rewind under Keyboard on the right. When I used the Transport Forward and Rewind buttons with my controller, there was no way to pause it once we were at the point we wanted without hitting Play. You'll see this control has a pause beside it, so pressing it again causes it to stop fast forwarding or rewinding. So when actually using the buttons in this mode, if we press it again, it will stop moving. Then we can set the start, stop, and record buttons using the transport drop down tools. Moving on to the knob, fader, and buttons bank, I'm going to the mix console, mixer bank zone, and setup. I'll set it up as 24 channels for the 3x8 controls we have. Then I'll program the knob for the pan left right, fader for volume, and button for mute. This process is a little tedious, but once you've got everything done, it will be mapped properly. You may have noticed as we're setting this up that each of these controls has a value mode and they are Jump, Pickup, Scaled, and Toggle. I've set each of the faders and pan knobs to Scaled Value which helps smooth out the transitions by slowly approaching the Save Value versus the MIDI controller value. Pickup doesn't change the value until you're close to the value that it's already set and then picks up from there. For the Mute button, the options we have were Toggle and Jump. Jump is recommended for Mute and Solo buttons but it doesn't work in my case. That's because the MIDI controller is set up as MIDI CC input, and the MIDI controller keyboard has an on-off value, which is represented by the light on the button instead of it just being a signal that's sent the same whether it's on or off, just like a normal button press. In this scenario, Cubase 12 is actually sending a signal back to the Akai MPK249 to tell it that a certain value is set to on or off. For example, when I open the project with all the buttons on the controller turned off, the Cubase software sends a signal to the keyboard to tell it track 2 is muted, and then the mute button on the keyboard lights up to line up with the signal in Cubase. If we're using toggle mode with the keyboard set in this mode, then we'll have to press the button on the controller three times before it actually changes the mute function. With it set to jump mode, it will automatically jump to on or off with one button press. After it's all programmed, we can just close the MIDI Remote Editor panel in the bottom and switch over to the Mix Console. From here we can see that the knobs, mute, and fader are all moving with the commands I'm inserting on the MIDI controller, so we can now adjust them with physical hardware controls which makes the mixing process a lot more engaging than moving around objects on a computer screen. In the next video we'll go over how to manually insert automation to our track with Cubase 12, but also how to record these changes in volume, panning, and muting with the MIDI controller as our track's automation. Thanks for checking out this video on setting up a MIDI controller as a control surface in Cubase 12. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications whenever a new video is released. You can also check the video description for products featured in this video, and social media accounts to see all our new content.